626. If you could stand and turn to 626. Number 17, the Lord leaves the temple. The glory of the Lord leaves the temple in Ezekiel 9.3. He stood over the threshold, Ezekiel 10.4, we looked those up. He leaves through the east gate, that's where we ended up in 10 verses 18 and 19. And uh, then exits uh, the Mount Olivet, uh, the mountain. Uh, uh, it, it, Ezekiel 11, and that's when he touchdown when he hits it it cleaves in two and he takes the road back into Jerusalem comes through the east gate and we had said that um, <coughs> we had said that um, the Ar Arabs the Muslims had the east gate blocked off uh, landmines machine gun nests they bricked it over anything to keep the Lord out now they're not going to if the Lord can show up in the midst of the disciples when the doors were shut, what's going to stop him? He, if he wants to catch the bullets, he can catch the bullets. They're not going to stop him. Anyway, we will start then on B here, the Lord's first coming and the Lord's second coming. So let's go to Malachi 3. Malachi 3.1, find out what's there. Yeah, here it is uh, where uh, Elijah shows up as John the Baptist here. Behold, I will send my messenger, he shall prepare the way before me and the Lord whom he seek and, and shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom he delight in. Behold, he shall come and say the Lord of hosts. So that's the first coming. Daniel is the same thing. Um, suddenly come to his temple. Uh, Daniel 9, when they're doing the uh, uh, 70 weeks and, uh, and counting down this, this time. Could be 62 weeks here that time. Daniel 9, 24 to 27. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to 
make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness, seal up the vision, prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Uh, by the way, where is that uh, seals broken and revealed? It says it's sealed up. Where is it? Revelation. Yeah, Revelation what? Pardon? 13. Revelation 13. Nope. No, five. Did you say five, Joe? I said six. No, the six is starts the. Uh, that's the seven-year tribulation. Revelation four and five is all about the temple. So it's Revelation five. Uh, in fact, well, let's go there. Keep your hand there, Daniel nine. It'd be Revelation five. Uh, they, they weep because no one's able to look look on the um, book. Verse 2 of Revelation 5, and I saw a strong angel proclaim with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And then he weeps because, or John weeps because no one's worthy, but it is the, the Lamb. Uh, verse 6, and I beheld it low in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders of the Lamb. As it had been slain, having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God set forth unto him. It says he is worthy. Let's see where. Ah, uh, no, verse five, chapter five, verse five. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. All right, that's where it is. Well, six one, six one. The lamb opens. Oh, one of the seals. One of the seals. Okay. But the but the thing is about the bad, uh, the last last days there. And so in your Bible, and back to Daniel ten, on your Bible, if you have one, um, now here's how mine. This is how mine goes. Some of them may have a, a binding, a, a raised binding on the antique ones. Now, if you count them on mine, if you count the bars, one, two, three, four, five. Where's the, how do you get seven out of that? You count the ends. You count the two ends. You count the top and you count the bottom. And you come up with seven. Look, look at your Bible. Seven is a very relevant number. Now, that doesn't mean they're like that. Yes. You have five and then at the top and the bottom. Well, no, this one has nothing. That one doesn't have anything. Pastor, huh? one of my Bibles don't even have that. Yeah, it doesn't have it. Yeah, it doesn't. It, it, it really doesn't mean anything. It, it just, but that's what, we, we find every proof that we can. The seven seal. It's a very relevant number in the Bible. As it's the number of completion. The outside, the inside. It's the number of completion. The that, perfect yeah, number. I told you, it's, it's seven is a very relevant number in the Bible, around the Bible and, and in the Bible. It's it's the number of completion and the perfect number. Yes. All right. Daniel nine, uh, ten, the seventy weeks. Verse twenty five. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth to the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the priest shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. So you have seven weeks and three score and two weeks. So that's 69 weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. After three score and two weeks, so 60 weeks, 62, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people, the prince that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end, the war desolations are determined. Now let's see, we're reading through 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. In the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation in that determined shall be poured upon the, des the desolate. All right, so you got 62 weeks. Then you have seven weeks. That's 69 weeks in one week. So... Um, Three score and two weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, verse 26. That's when Christ died for our sins on the cross. That's 2,000 years ago. Uh, the people of the prince 
and that would we, we would consider this now back when we were learning all this they considered that at the time the Antichrist and Pope uh, uh, the, in the flood when we have the flood where else does the flood show up uh, uh, there's a flood and it tries to kill the Messiah and he's protected and he's taken up what chapter is that? Revelation what? There's a flood. It's Revelation 12. Okay, keep your hand there. Go to Revelation 12. It's not Revelation 13. It's Revelation 12. So they see the, the stars. And, the, uh, and there appeared, verse, uh, verse 1, there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. It's, that is going to be Israel, the 12 tribes, and so on. Travailing in birth, she gives birth to the, the Messiah. The red dragon is, is Satan. Uh, brings forth a man-child, verse 5. And, uh, must rule all nations, rod of iron. The child is caught up to his throne, to his throne, up, up to God. The woman fled into the wilderness. This would be Israel, where she had place, a place prepared to God that they should feed her there. That's how many days they're going to feed her. And, uh, boy, where's the flood? Did I read over it? Born <laughs> heaven. Unless I am dead wrong here. Somebody got a, a concordance? Oh, 15? Verse 15. Yeah, here it is. And the serpent cast out of her mouth water as a, her mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might be caused to be carried away of the flood. Now there it says water. Swallowed up the flood. The, the flood. When we go back to this flood, is we were always taught and it's the flood is a flood of people and soldiers. Now, by the way, how big is the army? 200 million strong. Anyway, back here to Daniel 9. There's this flood. The flood is, is the people, a flood of people, the end of the war, desolation, and determined. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. How long is the week? The week is what? No, seven years. One week is seven years. And in the midst of the week, which would be the three and a half years, the mid, mid of the tribulation calls the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Uh, okay, uh, the abomination is the image, the Pope is the Antichrist. It's, it, this covenant is a treaty with the Jews. And uh, the Pope wants to get back into Jerusalem and not into Rome. At least that's that's the uh, what, what do they call that? Those are the conspiracy theories. Now, what is it? Who is it? No one knows. Well, no one. Well, no one. We get there. We don't have to know. We're going to be out of here. We're raptured out of here by then. So you got the sixty-two weeks to seven weeks, and. Um, uh, something to do with uh, seven weeks would be 490 years two weeks but this is not a, a lesson that it's just describing the Lord's first coming when Messiah is cut off in Daniel 9 so Mark chapter 1 showing the Lord's first coming Mark 1. One through three, beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before the faith, thy face which shall prepare the, thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So verse two, 
is Malachi, is the quote from Malachi 3, 1, verse 3, is uh, Matthew 3, 3. Uh, by the way, uh, in the New Bibles, as it is written in the prophets, what does it say in the New Bibles? Prophets. Pardon? Prophets. Singular. Uh, is, is that the case? Singular, prophet singular, or does it say Isaiah? I think it says Isaiah. And, and, and the reason why is because they're, the new Bibles are dead wrong. It's prophets because it's more than one prophet that's making these quotes. I, I just thought I'd bring that up. That's, uh, uh, it's, remember the Bible's not open for any private interpretation. No private interpretation. All right, the Lord's first coming, the Lord's second coming. Go to Ezekiel, then 43. Ezekiel 43. <clears throat> verses uh, 1 through 4. Afterward, he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looketh toward the east. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. And his voice was, was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. It was according to the appearance of the vision, which I saw even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. And the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Chebar, and I fell on my face, and the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is toward the east. He leaves by way of the east gate, he comes back by the way of the east gate, by, by way of the east gate. So it, 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 in the book of Ezekiel, it describes the, uh, the, the, the leaving of the Lord and the coming back of the Lord through that east gate. Now the outline, we'll spend a couple more minutes since we got such a late start. <clears throat> Ezekiel's call and commission, chapters 4 through 24, the judgment on Jerusalem. 25 through 32, judgment on Judah's enemies. Now they may name the enemies by name, by name. Uh, chapters 33 through 39, Israel's resurrection. They will be resurrected. And then chapters 40 through 48, uh, Israel during the millennium. In, um, <coughs> we'll just use this as an example. Chapters 33 through 39, what is Israel, what's the main theme there about Israel's resurrection? There's a, a, a story that goes on. Dry the dry bones. And what chapter is that? 33 through 39. I think it's chapter 39. Is that these bones come back to life. That is showing Israel's resurrection. Chapters 40 through 48. What is generally going on in there? Showing Israel the millennium. Anybody know what's going on? There's an angel that appears, and what's in his hand? It's a, uh, I think it measures a reed. And, and, and what is he doing? Measuring out the temple. Measuring out the temple. And you may ask, what are they going to do with the temple there during the millennium? I don't know, because it's made for sacrifices and all. So I'm not sure, because... Uh, we're ruling and reigning with them. There's a lot of a lot of questions that you know they have can speculate, but they don't have concrete answers to it. He's measuring out the temple in the courtyard. He's measuring everything out, giving a specific. Uh, you, you know, it's like a building project. This this building doesn't move until it's on paper. It's got to be on paper, measured out. This is and approved. This is what's going to work. And God measures all of that out. It's all measured out. And they got a bunch of red heifers now. And that's, and that's what I've been hearing. They got a bunch of them for the sacrifice. Uh, it means they can start building. So we're going to start here on chapter uh, uh, 19, uh, number 19 here. We'll start there. Ezekiel, he is, uh, Ezekiel is a sign. What are, what are any, any of the signs that he does? Any, any signs that you can recall that Ezekiel does? In other words, he's there saying, uh, those that are uh, here, 
tough. We're here for good in Jerusalem. Uh, the second invasion is coming up, and they're going to be toast. So, what does uh, what are some of the signs? Anybody recall? He cuts his hair and throws it to the wind. Some of it goes to the wind, some of it he burns. What else does he do? How does he make his cook his bread? With, his, with human waste. And he said this is defiled, that he's permitted to cook it, I think, with cow's tongue. You know, that stuff burns. What's another one he does? He digs a hole in a wall. This is all done during the daylight. He digs a hole in the wall. And, and takes the stuff out, showing that uh, Jerusalem, they're, 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 uh, they're going to be robbed and destroyed. And so these are some of the signs. He does these things for signs. He don't change his loincloth? He, uh, I think he puts the yoke on, puts the yoke on, and, uh, and walks around all chained up, you know. We'll look at, we'll look at, at those things. But he is there for a sign, and that's chapters 1 through 14. All these signs are given. And uh, they, they mean something. All right. Uh, anyway, and we'll pick this up next week. So, you know, the Lord's first coming, the Lord's second coming. He leads through the eight, east gate, comes back through the east gate, and then the major outlines of Ezekiel. What is the last phrase in Ezekiel? The sign that's over the gate going into Jerusalem. What, oh no, what is the city called? Anybody know? Without looking it up. <laughs> I think it's the Lord is there. It's like they do. The Lord is there. That's what, that's what, uh, it's kind of like, I, didn't we do, when we did, did those things over the heart, we, we embroidered on some of the shirts, the Lord is there. The Lord is there. Father, bless now the preaching in Christ's name.